Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, I will tell uh, some more results about uh, normal subgroups. Uh, let us uh, begin with uh, one of the characterization. So, I will leave this as exercise. So, we have seen many characterization of normal subgroups. So, here is one characterization using commutator of uh, uh, commutator of elements. So, we say let us start with uh, n being a subgroup of G. So, then n is normal in G if and only if. So, you look at the commutator of any uh, two given elements ok n comma g. So, this is by definition n g n inverse g inverse or one can also write it in other way not a problem n inverse g inverse. So, this you consider for all n in capital N and g in capital G. So, this should be an element in capital N ok. So, by uh, normalizing property ok this uh, normalizer. So, we will come to that later the normal subgroup by definition if you will take this conjugation of any element g n inverse g inverse. So, that should be an element in capital N and since n is already in capital N. So, the product of these two elements should be in N. So, one way is obvious. So, we are saying that uh, this is also one of the characterization of normal subgroups. So, this is something I am going to leave it to you to actually verify. So, now uh, this also actually uh, can be reinterpreted uh, in terms of uh, this commutativity of two elements ok. So, up to this uh, subgroup capital N. So, maybe like uh, so I will write down the exercise maybe this is uh, first exercise. So, the second exercise again it gives characterization of normal subgroup in terms of the commutativity of commutativity of two elements up to this uh, normal subgroup n ok up to the subgroup n. So, that means if g h is in capital N. So, then we should have if and only if. So, this is the statement h g should be in capital N and this should be true for all g h in capital G ok. Whenever the product of these two elements are in capital N, so then the, the reverse product also should be in capital N. So, this is something uh, I will leave it to you to check ok. So, we already defined uh, the center of G, we saw that they are all uh, normal subgroups, centers center of a group is a normal subgroup of G. So, we have also seen some examples of some subgroup they are not being normal. For example, uh, so this is something I will leave it to you to verify. So, if you take uh, this particular subgroup H generated by this 2 cycle 1 3. So, this is identity and 1 3 inside S 3. So, this is a subgroup ok. So, because the order of this 2 cycle is 2 if you square it you get identity this is basically subgroup generated by this uh, 2 cycle 1 3. So, this is a subgroup inside S 3. So, what one can prove this subgroup is not normal. So, this H is, is indeed not normal in S 3 ok. So, for example, I will give you very explicit element I will uh, leave it to you to check. So, check that if you take this particular element G which is 1 comma 2 inside S 3 and then if you look at the conjugate of this capital H with respect to this G H G inverse. So, this is not going to be part of H ok. So, this is something you can verify. So, you may wonder is there any uh, like way to get normal subgroups in, in general ok. Like I said normal subgroups they arise naturally as homomorphs uh, kernel of some homomorphism, but again one can actually give uh, some uh, necessary condition or sufficient condition for some group being okay, some subgroup being normal ok. 
so so let's let's do one small uh, proportion okay so so this is somewhat some elementary fact so this is something one can generalize further but later we will see how to generalize but let's now look at only the uh, condition so if you assume g to be a finite group okay let uh, g be a finite group and let h be a subgroup of g which has index 2 okay with uh, index so g h this bracket is 2 so that means there are only two left core sets of h inside g okay with this condition one can prove that h must be normal inside g okay so note that 2 is the smallest prime number okay so it means so the index of any subgroup divides g okay so in particularly this index of this subgroup h in g is the smallest divide, prime divisor that dividing g okay so this actually motivates us to actually look for uh, replacing this 2 by some prime number p and then look at a subgroup of h a subgroup of g which is h whose index is p where p is the smallest prime divisor of g one can ask whether that subgroup is normal in g or not it is indeed true we will prove it later okay so this is just an aside so this can be generalized the general statement is as follows so if h is a subgroup of g and the index is p where p is the smallest prime dividing this order of g so then h should be normal in g okay so this is something i will prove later but but let's look at what happens to the index 2 case so here is the proof so what we need to prove there are many characterization of normal subgroups so let us see for given element g in capital g the left coset of h must be same as right coset of h okay this is the class so how one can prove so because we have the one to one correspondence between the set of all left cosets of h in g and set of all right cosets of h in g so so the index 2 captures the number of left cosets as well as right cosets so in particularly if you partition g with respect to the left cosets you get first h which corresponds to the identity and then disjoint union gh because you start with g which is not identity when g is identity then this statement is obvious so we don't need to worry about it so if g is not identity so then one can also yeah so one should start with non identity element which is not in not in h okay so if you take some element g which is not in h then g h is not equal to h okay so this implies immediately g h is not equal to h so in particularly h and g h they form a disjoint left cosets of h and g similarly since again g is not in h and h will be not equal to h g so again you get the disjoint union of right cosets h disjoint union h g because there are only two right right cosets and two left cosets and these are the two two of them so now you can see that from purely set theoretic point of view g is partition into some a union b1 and a union b2 where a and b1 b1 okay a b1 they are disjoint and a b2 they are disjoint okay so g you have partition like this so then this immediately implies b1 equal to b2 
so that means hg is same as gh okay so only these two cases are possible either g in h or g not in h when g in h then for g in h we have g h equal to h and as well as h g equal to h okay in that case this is verified for for free so you take element which is not in h then we have verified that this is what happens so this means if you know for some reason your subgroup has index 2 then immediately you can conclude that that subgroup must be normal so this is actually very interesting result and this is used many times in order to understand uh, groups of house of orders small order okay so these things we will it will come later so we will actually keep using this as i promised i will also prove this general statement later once i introduce more tools okay so we have seen uh, some uh, normal uh, subgroups okay and as well as some subgroups not being normal so now uh, the notion of this normal is actually carried out when you take intersection of subgroups so that is something very clear so let's let me write it as proportion so this proportion in particularly allows us to actually talk about uh, normal subgroup generated by some subset of capital G okay so let me write first of all what is the proportion so I will write it for any collection but one can do it for just two uh, normal subgroups not a problem but let us the same proof works for any collection so let us start with a collection of subgroups okay so if hi so this is a collection of normal subgroups of capital g okay so then we can look at the intersection we have already seen that the intersection of subgroup is a subgroup so now we are looking at intersection of normal subgroups what can we say about it and this also must be normal in g so what is the proof proof again is very 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 easy you start with some g in g and x in the intersection okay so we will prove that the conjugate of this x by g that must be inside this intersection okay look at the conjugate okay so since hi is normal so this is going to be inside hi for each i in i as hi is normal in g okay so in particularly this g h g inverse is, is going to be inside the intersection of all i so that means we proved that g this intersection h i i in i g inverse is subset of intersection h i i in i okay so this is one of the characterization of normal subgroups so that is something verified now okay so now let us see how it actually leads to the definition of normal subgroup generated by some subset so here is the definition so you start with uh, some subset of g call it capital s okay so we already seen what is subgroup generated by capital s okay that is if you recall one way to define it you collect all subgroups of g that containing s and then take the intersection of them okay that is the subgroup generated by capital s which is also the smallest subgroup okay with respect to the inclusion that contains capital s so motivated from that you can easily see that if you are interested in looking for the smallest subgroup that contains s with respect to inclusion okay or smallest normal subgroup then all you do is collect all the subgroups let us call it hi okay h where h is containing s h is normal in g look at this collection okay so this is some collection 
that what you can do you can take this normal subgroup generated by s so which we denoted by bracket as normal so this is just take the intersection of all these groups coming from this collection i so take all intersection of all subgroups normal subgroups of g that containing this s as subset so that is the definition of normal subgroup of g generated by capital s of course this is uh, uh, defined theoretically so you may wonder why one will be interested in something like so this is actually very important uh, in order to define uh, what is called presentation of a group okay so so for example you must have seen in textbooks many textbooks uh, the dihedral group that is actually defined using a presentation of uh, the dihedral group okay so it is generated by some symbols a comma b such that uh, a power n is identity and uh, b is involution b square equal to identity okay so such definition makes sense once once we know what is presentation okay in order to define what is presentation of a group or group generated by some set of generators modulo some relations we need to first define what is called free group and then we need this notion of normal subgroup generated by that capital s so let me just briefly tell you what is the definition of of a presentation but uh, in this we still need to define what is called free group generated by some set x okay so we will come to that later uh, after maybe finishing whatever content that i am planning to finish in this course okay but i will dedicate some uh, one lecture in order to discuss about the free group okay but what is presentation of a group okay you start with the group it is okay so let us say g is a group and we want to say that g has this presentation so which is let's say generated by some set of generators let's call that is capital s modulo set of some relations so this is called the set of generators and this is called the set of relations okay so for example like i said so if you take for example s3 okay so and then you can take these particular elements sigma 1 2 and then tau 2 3 so then s3 has this presentation so it is generated by sigma and tau such that sigma square tau square is identity and then sigma tau okay i guess power 3 should be identity okay so this can be rewritten as follows sigma tau sigma so basically sigma tau power 3 is identity so then you you can write sigma tau sigma tau sigma tau is identity okay so let me let me use identity as e so then this can be rewritten so if you keep this sigma tau sigma which is same as tau sigma tau because sigma inverse is sigma and tau inverse is tau using these two first relation so this is called what is called bride move okay bride relation but anyway so this is something you can verify once i define what is uh, presentation of a group okay but i'm just giving you some head heads up so so what do you mean by okay given a group what is the meaning of it is generated by some set of generators modulo some relations so basically this s you pick it up from ca capital g only as in that example and then what you do you take the free group generated by s okay this is the free group generated by capital s okay that means the only 
thing that you actually put okay there should not be any relations for example in the finite group if you take any element then x power order of g must be identity okay that is a relation so those kind of relations should not happen in the free group generated by capital s okay so it is generated by elements of capital s as freely as possible so no relations should should happen so relations means it is just a product of some element being identity so this is called relation okay so such things should not happen inside your free group now what is the meaning of g is given by the set of generated it's generated by s and modulo the relations r so generating is clear you take the subgroup generated by s that should be capital g so that is what generating means what is the meaning of it is given by generating by this modulo some relations so that means you will be able to define this group homomorphism from f of s to g because g generated by capital s and then whose kernel okay so let's call this is pi this kernel is actually going to be generated by these elements of capital r okay this r is indeed coming from f of s so f of s elements can be thought of as words formed from alphabets coming from capital s so capital s or some collection of elements okay you can form a word like this okay and then any element of capital f of s can be viewed as word in s union s inverse so anyway so you have some set of words and then what you demand mathematically speaking so this g is isomorphic to this f of s modulo the normal subgroup generated by this capital r so that is the meaning of g being generated by some set of elements s modulo the relations r okay so let me repeat what you have so given s you have f of s which is the free group and you have this capital r which is subset of f of s okay so then f of s modulo the normal subgroup generated by this capital r should be isomorphic to g so the quotient makes sense once you have a normal subgroup we already seen that the quotient makes sense so that quotient you demand to be isomorphic to capital g so this is already kind of tells you that okay presentation of a group is not unique okay you can have many different set of generators and of course once you choose one particular set of generators the relations will be depending upon the set of generators that you choose okay so these things as i promised we will discuss it later but you can see that this normal subgroup generated by some subset plays a important role when it comes to a presentation of a group okay okay so let's move on uh, so here once we define uh, this normal subgroups one can immediately define what is called a simple group okay this is again very important notion so a group is called a simple group if it contains no proper non trivial normal subgroups okay what is the meaning of that so you know that this identity subgroup okay the singleton identity is a normal subgroup so that is easy to verify and the whole group g that is also normal subgroup okay so a simple group that has only these two as normal subgroups so none of other subgroups are normal okay if identity and g are the only normal 
सब ग्रुप्स ऑफ कैपिटल जी ओके सो दिस कैपिटल जी विच इज कॉल्ड सिंपल ग्रुप इट हैज ओनली दीज टू सब ग्रुप्स एज नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप्स एंड दे आर नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप दैट इज ट्रिवियल थिंग टू वेरीफाई सो दिस इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नोशन ओके बिकॉज even in finite group theory okay so one of the important problem of finite group theory is classifying all groups of order given order let's fix some n a natural number okay and then one can ask how many uh, okay not how many there will be okay that is also very important question there are two questions that are important so given n in n okay so now one can ask how many groups of of order n are there of course up to isomorphs okay and uh, we will see later that this is indeed a finite problem okay this has finite solution and of course uh, it is still wide open how many groups of order n are there for given n and then once we know so because we know that this is actually has finite uh, answer so one can immediately ask that how many groups of order n are there up to isomorphs like what are all can you classify okay can we classify classify all groups of order order n up to isomorphs so these two questions are very big questions that is what drives finite group theory okay so but one can uh, after learning sophisticated uh, languages in group theory one can see that any finite group can be built from what is called the simple groups okay so the basic building blocks of the finite groups are simple groups of course the way you build okay so every time you have to take extensions of some simple groups and so on and then you can using that only you can build general group okay so uh but this extensions becomes very very complicated so when you take uh, so these things maybe i will discuss a little bit at the end of the course okay but given two simple groups if you look at all possible extension of those two simple groups that's not something easy to understand okay even this becomes complicated problem even for abelian groups okay if you start with finite abelian groups look at all possible extensions so that becomes somewhat complicated problem so if you use finite abelian groups or finite simple groups to build some groups so that will be called soluble groups again theory of soluble groups is vast so you all must have uh, known about the classification program of this finite simple groups okay so so you can actually read that in wikipedia so i will leave it to you, to you. so maybe i will dedicate one lecture in discussing something about the classification of finite simple groups let's not do it now so here is one simple fact which is again uh, very easy to verify so i will leave it as exercise if you look at z modulo n z okay this is simple if and only if n is prime okay when n is prime it is cyclic and then you can see that if you start with the any non identity element that will generate the dz modulo n z when n is prime and when n is not prime if it is composite number we already proved given any divisor proper divisor we will have a subgroup of order that uh, divisor d okay so that means so since it is abelian group okay so any proper subgroup will become normal subgroup okay if it doesn't have any proper subgroup then it must be okay corresponding to the prime number 
okay so here again uh, i will give another example of not normal so these are all again uh, comes for free okay if you understand the symmetric groups so if you take this again uh, two cycle sorry the product of two cycle which is order two element inside s s4 so this is norm not normal in s4 okay and uh, so here is one more example which is again normal so it is uh, the group of upper triangular matrices inside gl2r or gl2c you take a b c where a b c are let's say complex numbers such that the ac should be non zero because the determinant should be non zero so then this is actually a normal subgroup or not so maybe you can check so check this uh, so this is a subgroup that is clear okay so let me just leave it to you to to check whether h is normal or not in g okay so what is g g is gl2c okay so this is all about uh, some properties of normal groups okay so later uh, what we will prove okay this is indeed a theorem so we will actually prove it later so we have already seen that an is actually a normal subgroup of sn because that can be realized as kernel of this sign map okay so we will see that for n greater than or equal to 5 an is the only normal subgroup of sn okay so this is something we will see and as a corollary we will have that an is indeed a simple group okay so an for n greater than or equal to 5 it will be actually a simple group and here we already have a another family z modulo p z so this is indeed a family of simple groups okay so in this uh, lectures so we you see that these two families they are simple groups okay again there are uh, many f uh, interesting family of simple groups that comes from the theory of uh, uh, lie groups okay uh, so we will not actually uh, so i will briefly explain when i discuss about the classification of finite simple groups i can't get into the too much detail because uh, they are all too technical okay but i will discuss about uh, that uh, maybe at the end of my lectures okay i will stop here uh, so we'll continue later thanks